Welcome to the Sports News Analysis YouTube page. On the heels of Tim Duncan winning the uh, Western Conference Player of the Week this week, we decided to rank the top 10 greatest power forwards in NBA history. And as you might expect, Duncan is somewhere on our list here. So uh, we just want to run these down 10 to 1. Be interested to hear what you think of not only our opinions, but your own opinions on who are the top NBA power forwards of all time. We'll start off at number 10, and our number 10 player is Dennis Rodman. Look, Dennis Rodman, he was nicknamed the freak for two reasons. One, because of his off-the-court antics, and second, because of his unique skill set on the court. Rodman's one of those few guys that can shut down any position on the floor. He's guarded everyone from centers to power forwards to point guards in his career, and not to mention his unique rebounding ability, which really made him uh, a Hall of Fame caliber player throughout his 14-year career. Uh, he won five championships between his days in Detroit and Chicago. Of course, was an enforcer on that Jordan Rules uh, Pistons team. And, you know, when we think of Dennis Rodman, because he was, he was in his prime uh, right when we started watching the NBA on a daily basis. And we think of the NBA Finals he had against the Jazz and against another member of our list, Carl Malone, and how he completely took Carl Malone out of his game and frustrated him, and we thought did a masterful job on him um, in that series. So that's what we think of when we think of Rodman, and he comes in at number 10. Number 9, we have Dolph Shays. Now, did we see Dolph Shays play? Absolutely not. Okay, he played from the late 40s through the mid 60s. We do follow, we do research a lot of NBA history. We're kind of dorks like that. So we have Dolph Shays in at number nine. Um, Shays played uh, for the Syracuse Nationals. Again, 15 year NBA career. Uh, when he ended his career, he was the he had the most points in NBA history with 18,438, averaging 19 points a game, which back then was a significant number. Uh, he was a 6'7 player, which again, for that era, made him physically imposing as well. Uh, what sets him apart from the centers of nowadays is the fact that he was actually a very good free throw shooter as well and actually led the NBA in that category three separate seasons. We have Dolph Shays in at number nine. Uh, number eight, more of a modern player, and that's Dirk Nowitzki. Nowitzki's a seven foot a taller power forward, but has a unique inside outside game that makes him a terrible matchup uh, for most conventional power forward. He's obviously a, a German import, averaging 23 points a game throughout um, his 12 year uh, NBA career. Uh, the knock on him was that he couldn't take the Mavericks to the championship. Well, that's been completely blown out of the water now, I would say. As two years ago, um, the Mavericks uh, did win uh, the NBA championship. So we'll see. Uh, has he, he has a chance to move up this list because he still has some basketball left in him, although he's injured right now. But Nowitzki comes in at number eight on our list. Number seven, we have uh, Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale, as you know, one of the key contributors uh, to those 1980s uh, Celtics teams. Uh, those Celtics teams won three titles in 81, 84, and 86. You know, he com combined with Larry Bird and Robert Parrish to be what many think may be the most affordable, formidable front line in NBA history. McHale had his best season in 1987, averaging 26 points and 10 rebounds per game. So in at number seven, we have Kevin McHale. And at number six on our list is another player from back in the day by the name of Bob Pettit. If you want to look at the NBA in kind of eras, all right, uh, Bob Pettit was the next best player in the league after Dolph Shays reached his, reached his later years. Pettit was a 6'9 player, um, played for the Hawks when they played in both Milwaukee and St. Louis. He, too, retired with the most points in NBA history at 20,880 for his career. Uh, now, put this in perspective. These kind of numbers don't get put up these days. 
But in 1961, he averaged 28 points and 20 rebounds uh, for a whole season, which is absolutely extraordinary, which is why, again, he, ta- he makes our list here at number six. He won one NBA championship, which is, to, to be honest, the reason why he isn't higher on our list. Um, but this is where we have him slated, Bob Pettit at number six. Number five, we have uh, Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett, you remember back now, it's commonplace now, but he was the the first player uh, in several years to come out of high school straight to the NBA, and he's still still playing in the NBA, uh, known for his energy level and tenacity. Uh, Garnett led the uh, Celtics to a championship. Um, He was a part of that trio that got brought to Boston. Well, Pierce was already there, but joined Ray Allen in 2007, Uh, to make up the big three. And in his first season with the Celtics, uh, they went out and won the championship. Uh, Known for being an extremely intense player, Garnett comes in at our list at number five. Number four on our list is a guy we think, even if some younger people are listening to this, you might have heard of, Elvin Hayes, uh, otherwise known as the Big E. Out of everyone on our list, he might be the most pure scorer out of anyone. Um, put it in perspective, he was a rookie in 68 and 69 and scored 28 points a game uh, to go along with 17 rebounds. Uh, he totaled over 27,000 points for his career, uh, made uh, three NBA Finals appearances um, with the Baltimore Bullets and did bring win a championship in 1978 with the Bullets. You know, Elvin Hayes is just one of those classic players that when you watch old footage, you realize the efficiency on the offensive end of the NBA game back in the day was so much more. And uh, Elvin Hayes was certainly a testament to that. Uh, In at number three, we have someone who's a familiar face both during his playing career and now in the media, and that is Charles Barkley. A 6'4 power forward. That's really all that needs to be said about Charles Barkley as far as his tenacity and work ethic. Uh, He was a great rebounder, could dribble the ball when he needed to. And, hey, look, they didn't call him the round mound of rebound for for nothing. Okay, Uh, He totaled over 23,000 points for his career. Did win an MVP. Made one finals appearance uh, in 1993 versus the Bulls and came up short. He's one of these guys, though, and basketball is a little bit different than the other sports. You don't really penalize the guy for not winning a championship. And uh, Barkley definitely falls under that category. He was also a member of the legendary 1992 uh, Barcelona Olympic Dream Team as well and is now, of course, a very famed and very good, we feel, quite frankly, announcer for the NBA on TNT. Uh, Coming in number two on our list is another player from the same era as Barkley, and that's Carl Malone. Carl Malone, like Barkley, never won uh, an NBA championship. He is, however, second all-time in points scored to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Malone has over 36,000 career points. Uh, He did win back-to-back MVPs uh, for the Jazz in the 90s. He, of course, formed that famous duo with point guard John Stockton. And look, if you're trying to uh, teach some kids how to run the pick-and-roll, uh, they made a career out of it. They both made Hall of Fame careers out of it. Uh, Carl Malone uh, would come up short in the in two NBA Finals series against the Chicago Bulls. Coming in at number one on our list, we rank the best power forward of all time, is Tim Duncan. Some people think Tim Duncan is boring. If you think consistent play at the highest level in the world is boring, then I guess you fall in that category. (laughs) Tim Duncan has led the Spurs to four championships. Tim Duncan also was the MVP in 2002 and has just been a consistent force for the Spurs during that time. Again, his career is still going, so he's just going to add to his uh, lore, if you will, as we go on here. Uh, He teamed up with David Robinson early in his career and quickly proved he could definitely handle the reins himself. He quietly goes about his business, but with his four titles and with his consistent numbers year after year, 
we have David uh, Tim Duncan, sorry, as our best power forward of all time. And that completes our list. Let us know what you think and hit us up on our Twitter page, which we have listed below as well. Thank you.